Hello, everyone. This is Pete from LMN. Thank you for joining us today for our inaugural LMN Speaker Series webinar. At LMN, our focus has always been to help you grow your business. That's why we've created the LMN Speaker Series to share some best practices from leading experts across North America. Our Speaker Series will serve as a platform for our dynamic speakers to share their insights and thought leadership on a wide range of topics on a recurring basis through virtual events like this. For general housekeeping, there will be times in the presentation where we will stop for questions. When we get there, you can ask through the questions module in your toolbar. Time permitting, we may not get to all of them, but be rest assured that the presenter will be provided the full list of questions to be answered offline. Now, without further ado, let's jump into today's event. Joining us today is Chad Diller, Director of Client Success at Landscape Leadership. His topic today is of great interest to many landscape contractors, which is pricing. Over to you, Chad. Hey, well, thank you, Pete, and thank you, uh, team at LMN. Um, I just want to first off just say that I love events like this. Um, I think our our industry, the green industry, has had a lot of great opportunities for over the years, uh, just like this that I've actually participated in um, as I worked at one of the landscape companies um, and got a lot of really great information from it. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to give back. Um, some of the things that I so richly received. And um, I think you'll know if you, if you follow me on social media that I'm the type of person that when I learn something that can help somebody, I love to share it. Uh, this topic that we're gonna cover today is kind of a tough topic uh, and sometimes controversial, uh, which is probably the reason why I chose it um, because I think that it makes for interesting uh, conversation. Um, before we dig in, I just want to take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about who I am. So you might be asking your, yourself the question, who on earth is this Chad Diller? And I think it's a really important question because I know a lot of you hear these types of presentations um, on webinars or at industry events from various, quote, marketing experts. And I want to be very clear right from the beginning that I'm one of you. So for the last 20 years, um, I've been in the lawn and landscape industry. If you look at the picture on the left, you might argue a little bit longer than that as well. Um, I've held all sorts of certifications as I worked in the industry, those from NALP and the International Society of Arborists. And um, I did the work for many years. So I, I've, I did the uh, production work. I've sold millions of dollars um, of this type of work right to clients. And eventually I ended up landing in what I consider my sweet spot, which is marketing. And for many years, I worked for a $13 million company in Pennsylvania and helped them grow. Um, over the years, like I said, I, I've participated in these webinars in the past. And my boss actually that owns Landscape Leadership, Chris Heiler. Um, that's how I got to know him. Um, he used to do some webinars for another work, um, industry organization. And about three years ago, I decided to come work for him. So I say that because I, I do have a, a deep appreciation for the webinar uh, format. Um, we work with lawn and landscape companies exclusively, helping some of the most innovative companies in the industry grow. So that's enough about me. I want to dive into the to the topic. I hope that um, helps um, my perspective on this. The pro the uh, topic today I titled "Your Prospects Number One Question and Your Number One Opportunity." And as you can see from the opening slide, we're gonna be talking about pricing, specifically something I like to call price guidance, uh, which I'll get into a definition of that in a little bit. So give you a brief agenda for kind of sub points of this, how we're gonna accomplish this today. We're gonna to kind of focus on four different areas. Um, they're gonna kind of bounce back and forth a little bit because they're so related, but we're gonna first talk about how has sales and marketing fundamentally changed? Uh, and as we face that change, why does it demand that we change uh, as lawn and landscape companies? Of course, that brings up a lot of questions and concerns. So we're going to have some time to cover some of those about what our concerns might be about adapting to this. And I want to try to illustrate for you how some companies that are very innovative in our industry have started doing this already and how it's been better for not just them, but also their prospective clients. So if you were to, if I pose to you a challenge to guess um, what my 14-year-old son does on regularly on his phone, um, you'd probably guess gaming and messaging, which you'd be right. Uh, but one of the other things that you might be surprised to learn 
is something else he spends a great amount of time on, and that is seeing how much things cost. Um, we all know that there's billions of items that you can research price on. Um, even intricate home maintenance and improvement services, you can find information out there. And just about a month ago, uh, he actually came in and was asking me some questions. Um, he was researching the cost to convert our house to solar, which completely surprised me. Um, and so he was finding all kinds of information about cost and ROI about that online. So I think we recognize that you know, sales and marketing has really changed, right? Um, I, I know you might be saying, okay, well, he's 14 years old. We, you know, our target clients, they're more kind of in that 35 to 60 year old range. But I think we all recognize the fact that this generation is drastically influencing every generation that's alive today. Uh, this powerful change is, it's underway. It's already been happening. And, and I think back, if you, if you kind of think back a little bit and, and kind of ponder how you sold, uh, how you bought things, how you researched products and services um, five, 10, or 15 years ago, it's very, very different today. So I wanna take a look at kind of old school sales and marketing and kind of contrast that to what we're kind of already seeing going on right now. I think this is important because sadly, um, I deal with lots of green industry companies on a weekly basis and as a rule, our industry is behind the curve on this. Um, they're still engaging in things that were practical and useful 10, 15 years ago um, and it's costing us. Um, old school sales, uh, Kind of like this, I have this funny picture up here. Maybe that's why all these furniture stores are always going out of business. But, you know, the way that things used to exist is, is that if you wanted to buy something as a buyer, the brand and the salesperson had most of the keys to the kingdom. Um, there was limited options out there and engaging in this process was really time consuming. You were giving up part of an evening or a good part of a Saturday going around for a couple different places. And it was just very taxing. Um, but as my 14 year old buddy uh, so perfectly illustrates that this is not how buyers behave anymore. So I wanna talk a little bit about what buyers do now um, before we kind of look at exactly um, the definition of how they're, they're shopping. And to do this, um, I think this, this graphic here is really helpful because marketing experts um, have kind of identified what they call as a buyer's journey. Uh, people will go through this journey kind of in one direction, but they kind of go back and forth a little bit through these stages. Uh, it's divided into three parts. Um, what they, those parts divide as is the first is what they would call an awareness stage, meaning your prospective client is kind of identifying the starting symptoms of a problem, um, or they have identified the symptoms of an opportunity that they'd like to see fulfilled. And so they start kind of learning as a little bit about those. And as they start learning about that problem or, or solution, they, they start to really look at the differences. They consider the approaches of uh, the advice that they're finding out there. So their problems named, um, they're looking at those different approaches side by side and considering them. And at some point in time, they after they've defined the problem, they've researched the approaches and narrowed it down to a really short list of potential companies, then they're in what's called a decision stage, meaning they're a lot more motivated to buy. So keep this journey in mind how uh, we're gonna talk about how the buyer today has changed and how our company should change. Think again about prospects that you're dealing with now versus ones that you might've dealt with 10 or 15 years ago. People are very, very busy and they're very protective of their time now. So sales today is very different because now instead of the companies and salespeople having all the power in this process, the buyer is really taking control. Sometimes the buyers have hundreds of options and you guys have probably seen this even in your own market of how many options there are out there for lawn care and landscape companies. Also, they're very hesitant to engage with salespeople um, they want to do things on their terms. They want to start it and stop it and resume it. And they want to journey as they see fit. Um, they want to buy on their term on their timeline and with their terms. And when they get to the point where they've narrowed it down to just a couple options, that's 
when they engage with salespeople. So I think back, you know, in my years of selling lawn and landscape services, um, when I started selling is about 2005 and finished about 2016 until I moved into this role. And I think back and I think about, man, there was a huge shift. I think about when I first started selling those services, it was really common to get that we're getting three quotes line. And people took a long time to make decisions. Go forward 10 years later, and now even three or four later is uh, years past that, people are rapidly making decisions and they're really not wasting a lot of time with doing things the old school way. So this shift is uh, not mysterious uh, why it's happened. It's because of the internet. It's how uh, people decide to um, research what they want to buy this, this day and age. Um, and they're using search engines to, to research this. I don't want to dive too deep today into how point out an analogy that I think is going to be helpful as we talk about providing price guidance on our websites for prospective clients. I'm sure many of you remember that person down there in the bottom left. There's probably still some of them around. That's a librarian. And, you know, when I was in school, we would go to the library and the shortcut, instead of trying to find the answer, we'd go and ask the librarian. And the librarian would direct us to a good resource. And she helped us. And Google is kind of like a great librarian. Uh, if you think about people are asking all sorts of questions, I mean, they're even talking into their phone and asking them questions now. And they're asking Google questions and Google's job is to try to get the best possible answer they can for the searcher. So Google's looking at what's out there, what are the books in the library? And then they're also looking what are books that people have checked out? What are resources online that other people found were useful? And if they can pull it off on top of that, we've all seen this if you're giving permission, location permission. So Google is also seeing, is there a great answer, it's relevant, and is it near to you? So I use this as an example, and this is a real life example right here in the top, in, in the right side of the page here that I searched for what the cost of an outdoor kitchen is. And you can see within the top three listings that came up in that question, there are two uh, resources, uh, one's actually placed twice, with an answer to that. And that's a company that's near me. So what does this mean for the lawn and landscape industry? Well, our prospects are on this journey. They're starting off like the guy on the left here. They're very frustrated. They've got hard questions they want answers to. And they want to get to that spot on the right. They just want to play with their dog. They want to love life. Um, they have limited time and they want to know what stuff's going to cost them. They're, they're looking for guidance. So this is why I made the title of today's discussion, your prospects number one question and your number one opportunity. In the buyer's journey at some point, your prospect is going to have, to, is going to ask several questions, not just one, but several that point directly to price and cost. And when they ask these questions, they're moving closer to making a decision. We, as lawn and landscape companies, need to be there when they ask those questions. If we are, we have a great opportunity to qualify those searchers as a good or bad fit for our sales team and to start the discussion from there. So it's imperative that we don't shy away from providing help in this area we need to guide our prospects and answer their questions as best as we can um, relating to how much our services cost. HubSpot did a survey, uh, it's a marketing platform, and they did a survey on hundreds of thousands of website uh, search queries. And they came up with this statement that said, if a company doesn't have pricing information on their website, 75% of visitors will look elsewhere. If you don't believe me, look at the analytics on your website, comparing how many people come there and how many people turn into leads. It illustrates the point. So I'm saying don't miss this opportunity for a number of reasons. Number one, search engines love these types of queries. So I encourage you after today's webinar to just pretend you're a prospect and start entering questions and see what comes up. Also, I think we all recognize that we're all guilty from this from time to time of wasting time on prospects that have no clue how much our services cost. Also, an opportunity is that your competitors, for the most part, 
aren't answering these questions. And then also prospects are really going to value this honesty and assistance. Um, and if that's not enough, the one selfish thing that you should do this for is because I've seen undeniably that cost and pricing content generates the most amount of sales for companies on their websites. So I'm sure right now you're probably skeptical. You probably have a bunch of questions and there's a lot of objections that um, you might be having. And so um, I don't know if, uh, Pete, if we have some questions that, that you, you had brought up that we might want to address. Yep, uh, Chad, we seems like there's a pretty big uh, trend of companies and people here asking a common question here uh, amongst their competitors. They're worried that if they uh, face their pricing up front that their competitors will know what they charge. Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Well, we can cover that. Yeah, did you have any other ones or you want to just go through that one first? Uh, yeah, you know what, we'll go through that one first and I'll bring up uh, the other summary ones. Okay. Well, that's a legitimate concern. Um, so I, I always like answering questions with another question. I know it's annoying, but I think it's it's helpful. So let me ask you a question. If you're higher in price and someone comes and realizes your prices are high and they're a price shopper, wouldn't you want them to go to your competition? Do you want to be the cheapest person out there? I mean, re remember the subtitle of the day, it's about landing the right prospects. So even in best case scenario, you're lower in price than your competition. It may spur your competition to lower their prices to try to meet you. Um, it'll just make your pricing even more palatable. So I understand the objection, but the benefits far outweigh the uh, the concern on that one. Did you, yeah, did you have then, other ones? And then a few other ones were, uh, what if we want to price out our lawn care but don't know how big their lawn is? Okay. Um, what if we, our prospects wants to call us first, if we put it on our website, they may not call mm -hmm. uh, and won't our pricing scare some people away. And from a design build example, uh, there are just way too many variables to price jobs out this way. All right. That's a lot of really great questions. Um, I think most of the slides that I'm going to kind of follow with, with some of these examples are going to answer a lot of those questions. Um, and possibly even some other ones you might have rattling around there. So sorry, you will, we'll keep rolling here and, and get, get into those. Um, well, let's start with something really simple. Lawn care, you know, this is a pretty simple example. And this is an example from Oasis Turf in Cincinnati. Chemical lawn care, it's based on a fairly simple chart. You got square footage, you got treatments that price based off the chart and uh, boom, you get a price. So the one objection, we said like, what if we don't know their lawn size? Um, this is a great starting point though. So um, if you look down farther on this page, I didn't capture the whole page, but you'll see there's some fine print that that base is that price off of. So this is giving them several tiered options, um, example pricing, there's a little fine print down lower, and this is the page on this website that generates the most amount of leads. In fact, Oasis generated 2,000 paid customers last year through their website by doing this. Um, I'll show you another example, this is, uh, this is a long, another lawn care um, company that's near me, and they even go a step beyond this. They actually even let people, you know, select another factor in here with the size of their lawn, um, and they can kind of choose between these different program options. Uh, so you might be asking yourself the question, I mean, I sold lawn care. I, I understand people buy a program off a mail offer, and you go out there and you go, wow, this place is a mess. <laughs> they need a lot more than a spray in their lawn. And again, we can have fine print in this. This is meant to kind of clarify, uh, to gain some interest right away. Um, you can have this subject to inspection on the lawn. If the lawn needs to be renovated, you can say, okay, time out, let's, let's look at this first. Um, but remember, this is a way to guide them, to kind of help them um, put themselves in a couple of buckets. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the three option. Um, there's been a lot of uh, Studies that have shown that if you give people three options, that probably 65 to 70 percent of them will go right for the middle option. Um, the next largest group will actually go for the top option, and the last group will go for the basic, like the down the bottom of the barrel. Uh, so this is just another way to to get that information. Um, another example: three options. This is uh, you can even do this for plant health care, um, which I know is really subjective, plant size, all that stuff. Um, this is Joshua Tree Experts. It's a company that has like a four visit, six visit, and eight visit program. 
if you'd read down far on the page, there's some fine print about, you know, the approximate um, property time, uh, size. And again, you're, you're basically walking into a sales situation and knowing, is this a type of prospect that says, I will do anything that it takes to get this looking right? Or I want the cheapest solution possible, or am I in the middle of the road? So that's, that's a great piece of information to have so you don't waste the time in the middle of the sales uh, conversation with your prospect trying to figure those things out. Um, I think one of the other questions that you had said um, was something about design build. I, I know some of you are sitting here, and you're saying, this is great, you know, lawn care, spraying trees, that's, that's easy. But when you start getting the design build, I mean, we, we've got way too much stuff that we have to consider. So I could say to you that you can do this for that, and you should. Uh, this is an example uh, from a design build company. Uh, it's the example that we used earlier um, from the Google librarian. And this company actually positions uh, interactive calculator on their website. Uh, so prospects can select from 24 different items, like a patio or a kitchen or whatever. And within each item, they can choose kind of like a small, medium, or large option. And there's a vague description about kind of what that means. And as they add the items, you can see how it's doing it here. It kind of builds a rough cost, like kind of a loose range. And there's some fine print. And it also calls for action about filling out a form. So there's a couple of different ways you can use something like this. So the first way you could do is uh, you could just kind of openly position it on your website so that people could research and, and learn what things cost. Uh, the other thing you can, you can do is kind of gate this, meaning they have to give you a little bit of information before they can get to the tool, which might be really helpful if your sales team is really hungry with following up with kind of lukewarm leads. And, um, and you can follow up with some more you know, re related content about price or specific features they're looking at. Uh, or you can do what this company does if, if you just say, you know, this is way too much to put out there. What we can do is after we have a conversation on the phone with a prospective client and we need them to work through this exercise of clarifying their budget because they have no clue, we make them go through this. So again, you're guiding them, no matter if it's you know, in the, big, the awareness stage or they're in the decision, decision stage, you're, you're guiding them. But I know there's still many of you that are sitting here like Homer and you're saying, there's no way, Chad, we can't do this. There's you know, commercial maintenance, all this stuff. There's way too many variables. Um, we need so many data points, even get close in the ballpark. And I wanna tell you that this is still no excuse for not offering price guidance. You're the guide. It's your job to take a lukewarm website visitor that comes to you and turn them into a hot lead for your sales team. That takes time and it also takes some valuable discussion and some resources that they can use. So just remember the journey. There's all types of things, different types, types of content you can position in different parts of the buyer's journey here to do this. Um, I wanna look at some examples again, um, some meaningful discussions you can have, um, whether it's a simple service like lawn care to a complex like design build. This is an example for something simple. This is a comparison guide that Oasis has on their website that generates a lot of leads um, for people that are just starting to become aware or considering different um, potential companies. Um, it has a lot of information in there about Oasis. They're completely visible with that. And then we use objective information that's on their competitors' websites to talk about what they offer, what they don't, um, pricing, that sort of thing. And then a lot, a lot of the answers as far as price goes are empty for competitors. So what does this do in your mind if you're a prospective buyer? You see a lot of information over here and very uncertain missing information. It makes you trust one brand and it makes you kind of skeptical of the other one. Why aren't they putting that information out there? Blog articles are probably one of the best ways to, to provide price guidance on a website um, with really meaningful discussion. I'm not talking about a 400 word uh, salesy, pitching your services, bragging about how wonderful you are. I'm talking about valuable resources that get really into the deep details about um, what things cost. Uh, you can explore factors that influence that price. You can uh, talk about considerations that'll raise your project or lower your project. Uh, you could talk about um, how to compare quotes that, that snow one's a good example like you know like here's here's the here's the bar to hold everybody to um, this is the things that you should be including on that uh, you can talk about hidden costs things that people might not be thinking of like what else might be in your project again 
Your goal is to guide them. Uh, you can talk about various methods and approaches that companies take and how this influences pricing. Uh, you can talk about how, you know, within your budget, how you could adjust your, your overall budget by phasing out some parts of your project. You could talk about that one down the bottom left here, like if you didn't want to do a natural stone masonry laid, you know, um, walkway, you could do stepping stones. If it's a, you know, a fitting place on the property, do that, save some money there. Um, you can, you can do all sorts of things like that. Uh, you can even like in the bottom right, you talk about commercial maintenance or commercial installation. You can talk about not just the cost initially, but what's the cost and price on the long run of what this might save your company or what it might save a homeowner. And again, this is um, what a helpful guide does. Um, it is not what most of your competitors are doing. And this is a really refreshing change to frustrated buyers um, that are looking for information and can't find it. Um, this builds trust, and I've personally seen this uh, deliver really measurable results for lawn and landscape companies that do this. So again, my challenge today is twofold for you as we start stirring your mind up on this topic of price guidance, is to embrace your prospect's number one question about pricing and costs. And as you do that, the second part of that challenge is seizing that opportunity meeting your prospects where they're at on their terms and really helping to guide them so that they can get exactly what they're looking for. Thanks so much for your attention. Um, I don't know if you wanted to go to questions or what your time is, but I appreciate everybody's attention today. Thanks, Chad. Uh, on behalf of LMN and today's attendees, I want to thank you for your insightful presentation and providing our viewers with clear tactics and approaches to handling the sensitive topic of pricing. Uh, you've given the audience a lot to think about. Um, we have some time here for Q&A, so okay. if anyone wants to hit the questions uh, button on their module, feel free to type them in. Um, just to kickstart, one that I saw that's been coming in is uh, whether this presentation will be made available for viewers. Uh, and yes, it will be. It will be uh, uh, permissible through our archives. Uh, so for anyone who is interested in uh, accessing this after the fact, it will be made available. And uh, we'll keep the line open for a couple more questions. Right, one question just came in. Um, so from Jennifer here, how often should you update your pricing? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I think, you know, like uh, some of these examples were getting pretty fine tuned, like with exact pricing, like with lawn care and that sort of thing. Um, so that's something you probably want to look at every year if your minimums are going up specifically. Uh, that you might want to adjust that so that any marketing pieces that are going out coincide with what's on your website. Um, when it comes to you know some of the bigger ticket items, I mean it's so variable in pricing there that you know you're going to really have ranges that you're working with to help people. Um, so it might not it might be something you look at every several years for those types of things. Awesome, thank you. Uh, another question came in. What is the best way to get a hold of you or to access more information from you, Chad? Sure. I mean, I would say to social network that I am in um, on the most is LinkedIn. So look me up on LinkedIn, and um, certainly uh, my web my our website's there as well as my email address. So if you have specific questions, um, message me on LinkedIn or email me. Uh, also have a YouTube channel that I've started producing some videos for this year. I'm going to be doing some regular stuff just like this. Awesome. And we have a question here from Charles. So before I get to Charles' question, anyone else who have any questions, please get them into the questions module uh, before we wrap it up. But for Charles, we have, uh, should we really try to offer pricing on all of our services or just a few choice services? For example, we offer mulching, hardscaping, spraying, mowing, etc. All right. So that's a good question. So again, it, it really depends on what you can narrow down pricing for. Um, I think some things are very easy to give good example pricing for, uh, but a lot of times prospects, especially the, the larger ticket of the item or the more variables that they understand with that, um, they're just looking for a push in the right direction. Um, so I would say that in some way, whether it's writing an article and giving ranges or talking about 
um, just factors that influence it. That that should be happening continuously for all types of services. Um, again, the the goal of this is to provide some guidance. It's not to price out, um, to give estimates on your website. It's not to have e-commerce on your website, even though there is a move for that happening. It's some you know things like lawn care and mowing. Um, but again, I think the goal would be is to provide guidance as, in many areas as you possibly can. You might start in one place. It might be a strategic objective for you for as a company to grow something like your lawn care. And that might be where you want to start and do a really good job with that. And then the next year, move on to something else. Awesome. And uh, it looks like we have a couple more questions here uh, from Alan. Can you comment on TV radio marketing in 2019? And other than events and social media, what is the next best form of marketing in 2019? That's a loaded question for a whole other webinar. Um, <laughs> um, well, I, I would say this. Um, be very careful spending money on something you don't own. Uh, and I say that because I'm very opinionated about this. And, and I believe that your website is something you own. Um, whatever you invest into it wisely you will get results past when you stop spending. So I'm very critical of, don't get me wrong, there's advertising at works, um, but if you're spending money, you turn the faucet on and something's coming out of the other end and then you turn the faucet off and it stops, your, your um, capacity to have like residual results from that is, is something I wouldn't be spending my money on. I'd be spending it on what do I own, my website, and how can I, have these resources on my website so people can use them this month and three years from now. So I would say anything you can do to enhance your search presence, to answer these questions online, to provide resources that are interactive on your website are where you should be diverting a lot of your stuff. Television, radio are very expensive. And again, it's advertising. Doesn't mean it can't be part of your mix, but I see a lot of companies doing that because you know that's kind of the quick and easy way to try to get something out of the faucet. Hopefully that answers your question. Awesome. Uh, another one came in here. Should we add disclaimers on the pricing pages to account for sudden cost increases in materials, natural disasters, gas hikes? Um, <laughs> be careful <laughs> if you start sounding like you know there's a bunch of legalese. Again, if you're um, if you're if you're doing something that has pretty much a fine-tuned starting point, like a lawn care program, again, it's starting at. You know, based on a certain square footage, you can adjust those figures. When, when you're talking about how much does it cost to put a patio in, every project's going to be different. So I don't think it's really necessary to do that at that point. I think there are part, again, you're providing some guidance and trying to get a lead. Um, there's a part of the sales discussion where you find, you talk about all that fine print um, after you've already gained some relational equity with, with a prospect. All right, and uh, the final question here looks like we have, can you provide an example of a design build company that uses a system like this, like Oasis, but design build? Yes, um, so like I said, that, that example, Earth, Turf, and Wood, you can't access that because they decided to use it in their, um, in, their, uh, in their sales process only, so it's not freely accessible. Um, but um, there's a company called Dexscapes of Virginia um, that we build out a calculator that's pretty pretty similar to that. Um, that that's a tool that you can go and, and take a look at. Okay, awesome. That looks like oh, looks like we have one more. Sorry, final no question from Grant. Uh, would you compare this website marketing to how IKEA prices their packages in their store? Well. Uh, carefully, <laughs> I think most of what we do is not a commodity, um, like a desk or a product that you can buy. Um, there is a, a, an additional value past just getting your lawn done. Um, so there's a lot of expertise. And so I, I say this in that providing the guidance, but there's still this human part of this that you guys need to really um, sell your, yourself and your company in the sales process. Um, but I wouldn't compare this to a commodity where somebody could buy everywhere. But I do think packaging and giving an idea of what things cost is kind of the way culture has moved, period. So we need to adapt to that. Um, we can't just be doing things the way that we did them back in the 90s, early 2000s. 
Awesome. So it looks like we've got through all the questions that were here. Uh, so again, on behalf of LMN, I want to thank, thank, take the opportunity to thank everyone for joining us on today's webinar as we embark on this novel venture. Check out our upcoming lineup for the speaker series by visiting golmn.com slash speakers dash series to see future events. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us and we look forward to having you in the future. Cheers.